Welcome back to Master Your Glass. I am Livio. Sometimes people just do not agree on the martini. Three parts to one parts, six part to one part, nine and a half part to one part. Well, today we're gonna talk about the 50-50 and I think it makes everybody agree that it is delicious. So what are we waiting for? Let's get into it. I'm excited to bring you yet another really cool classic cocktail here, and that is the 50-50. As the name implies, the 50-50 cocktail is basically made with equal parts of gin and dry vermouth, and it'll occasionally ask for a dash or two of orange bitters. This uh, combination of 50-50 makes this drink a lot lighter in alcohol, a lot easier to drink, more sessionable. It's almost like a gateway to the martini. And it's really, really nice. Now, the way we know martinis, or at least we knew them before this beautiful 50-50 came back to, to our lives, was a ratio of three to one gin to vermouth, or all the way up to nine to one gin to vermouth. And these are known as drier styles of martinis. Um, but most historians agree that the 50-50 was the original one, and that from the late 1800s all the way to the beginning of Prohibition in 1920, all martinis were 50-50. As a matter of fact, even if I take a copy of the Savoy Cocktail Book from 1930, in this book, there is a recipe of the 50-50 cocktail with uh, equal parts. So, uh, what happened was is this drink basically disappeared. We knew nothing about it. And I think we knew nothing about it for a really long time uh, because vermouth was frowned upon. Nobody really liked to put a lot of vermouth in their drinks throughout the 30s, the 40s, the 50s, the 60s. It was an ingredient in the drink, but it wasn't meant to be a big one. Even in the 70s and the 80s and the 90s, vermouth basically sat on the bar. Some people put it next to the refrigerator's uh, engine and so it would get warm and vermouth would go bad. And so it wasn't a really good ingredient. People looked down to it. And so the idea of putting half of it in your martini or half a portion in your martini was going to be not accepted. Then right around the 2000s came some trailblazing bars, especially out of New York, Milk and Honey, and then also the Pegu Club that started putting the 50-50 on the menu. Uh, with that came also an improvement on not only how we stored vermouth and bartenders understood now that vermouth goes in the refrigerator, it's uh, you keep it fresh and it will give you really good flavors. But along with that, also came uh, the, the, the introduction in the market of better styles of dry vermouths. And so this drink started not only uh, coming back, but flourishing really well. Today, I'm gonna make you just one version, but I'm gonna show you three different ways to make it. So do make sure you watch this video all the way to the end because I have a couple ways to pre-batch it. And uh, if, I, if you'd like this drink, which I'm sure you will because it's really so delicious, and if you uh, want to pre-batch it, this could just be the next drink at your party. Okay, so to make this drink here, I'm gonna go ahead and chill my beaker. First, add ice to it and then give this all a nice little stir just to get it nice and cold. Nobody likes a warm martini. All right. When you see con condensation and when your fingers tell you it's cold, that means it is cold. I'm gonna go ahead and just basically strain out any of that unwanted water in this beaker right here and set that there. Now, as you all know, I love to start with the base spirit. In this case here, I'm using Junipero Gin, 49.3 alcohol by volume, possibly and probably the first craft copper pot still gin that was launched in 1996 in America. What's really cool about this gin is the flavor profile. It's got a great botanical blend, but, but it, that includes cardamom. And what I really enjoy about it is that it uses both bitter and sweet oranges. And that is really cool. Why is it cool? Because the 50-50 occasionally calls for orange bitters. And so with a gin that already has that component to it, 
you might be looking at a, a greater experience. It also has a nice little lemony finish to it, which again, for a cocktail that uh, calls for a lemon as a garnish, more frequent than not, uh, that's also a nice little touch. So in here I am adding 45 mils or one and a half ounces of Junipero gin and same amount, one and a half ounces or 45 mils of a French dry style vermouth, just like that. And then just one dash of orange bitters will do it. Now a nice little 25, 30 second stir, just like that. While I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and grab a nice cold glass. Okay, super. My glass is pre-chilled. My 50-50 is nice and stirred. Let's go ahead and do that. Now to garnish this uh, uh, drink here, I'm gonna go ahead and do the lemon peel garnish. As you can see, I'm just gonna take a swath from the lemon and set that right there. Now because I can and because I have time, just kind of make it look a little more pretty. Get a little cut here, a little cut there, and like that. Like that. Now of course OCD's kicking in, so I've got to make it look good. There we go. And I'm just gonna go ahead and give this a little press just like that. A little, little twist. Don't wanna to twist too much because you don't wanna break it, but you want those essential oils out and then you just wanna drop that right in there. Okay, so now this drink is done and I'm gonna go ahead and taste it. And then after this, I'm gonna show you how to pre-batch it in two different ways. It's really cool, uh, so do please watch that. Oh. Ah, oh, the aroma, those nice little lemon oils are uh, popping the most. A little bit of the notes from the, maybe a touch of orangey notes uh, from the Junipero. Oh, so nice, so nice. It's great to have a martini that actually gives the dry vermouth a chance to express itself while having a gin base on the bottom that is also pushing up with its botanicals. It's pushing up all those bitter, bitter rooty notes of the, of the vermouth, along with giving some of its orange flavors to it. Mm. Such a great drink. I think this could possibly be the next drink at your party. So now I'm going to show you exactly how to pre-batch it. Let's do that. First step is basically to take the ingredients that are in the cocktail and multiply them times the uh, amounts you wanna make. I'm gonna go ahead and make eight versions, eight portions of this drink. And to do that, basically the calculator will tell me that eight times one and a half ounces, which is the amount of uh, Junipero that should be going in this drink, is 12 ounces or 355 milliliters. So in here, I'm gonna go ahead and pour 12 ounces or 355 milliliters of the Junipero Gin. The next thing I'm going to do is the exact same amount, eight ounces, 355 mils of my dry vermouth, just like that. Okay. And then I'm gonna put eight dashes of orange bitters. There we go. Okay, so 
When it's time to make this drink, by the way, at this point here, I'm gonna give it a little rock, not a, not a big shake, but just a little rock to incorporate those ingredients together. Now, when it's time to make the drink using this method, right, you would basically take your beaker, which I have here, and in it, you would pour the three ounces of the combined ingredients, like that, and like that. And you would basically stir and serve just like I showed you earlier. So as a matter of fact, why don't I just do that for demo purposes? Now this drink was already made, so I'm just giving this a little stir like that to add, which should be about 25% of water dilution and to make it cold. And then I'm gonna take a nice cocktail coupe and I'm gonna strain it inside, okay? Okay, from this point on, you know the drill. Add the garnish, good to go. So this drink was a lot easier to make. Another way of doing that is actually to go back, going back to your pre-batch, is to already add the 25% of dilution from the ice into the bottle by just putting clean, clear spring water. And then putting this product in the freezer. That, therefore, when your guests arrive, you can basically pull the bottle out and pour it directly inside of a cold glass. Now, I'm gonna show you how that works because I have one here. So as you can see, this bottle is nice and cold. This bottle here includes the six ounces of water, which would be the 25% uh, of dilution. I'm gonna just pour it like that. It's also nice and thicker. And one of the things you could do for the party is to always have available the three preferred garnishes of a martini drinker, which in this case would be onions, lemon peel, and olive, and just some little picks so that they can do that. Uh, me personally, I'm an olive guy, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that, and I'm gonna give this a try. Yeah, easy, delicious, again, really nice. I'm enjoying how much that vermouth really comes out thanks to the junipero pushing it nicely and the flavor of the junipero there is cardamom in it i don't taste much of it but i can tell it's playing really really nicely in the drink and those oranges bam really really good and there you go so if you did like this episode of master your glass and if you did get value out of it please go ahead and give it a like and if you want to, why don't you subscribe to the channel and hit the bell? That way you get notified when more of this comes out. And what's more of this? Well, it's expert instruction 